those of us joining us online, our devotional, we're going to do a, a devotional for today, just a quick little devotional, and we've been going through a series on the heart and enemies of the heart. So I read a book here, and I'm going to give you the brief synopsis. Um, enemies of the Heart. It's a book written by Andy Stanley, and it's about four core emotions that could seek to control us. And these emotions are this, guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy. And these four core emotions, if we don't get a hold of them, they run all over us, and they control us. And so Andy Stanley, he, he summarizes these four things, guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy, in a debt-debtor language. So the debt-debtor language is this. It's you owe somebody something, and then I'm going to hold you to it until I cancel the debt. Now, this whole thing is based off of a passage in Matthew 18. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew 18. 18, 23 through uh, 35. And the story is this. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him and owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. 27. And now out of pity for him, the master of that servant released and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one, was, one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, not even, that, not even nearly as much, and seized him. He began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. Verse 31, when his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all of that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. I have no idea what Jesus man, means here at the very end when he says, so my father's going to do the same to you. <laughs> what I do know is it's not good to hold people to their debts, to not cancel debts when God has forgiven us and canceled every single debt we've ever owed him. So I wanted to, in this short time, in this short little few-minute devotional, break down the four core emotions. Guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy. Now we said before, Jesus' definition of forgiveness is canceling a debt. So when he cancels a debt, when someone cancels a debt, they say, you don't owe me anymore. In these four core emotions, I think of these as bricks on the floor. And these bricks cover the roots in our ongoing tree illustration. And the more bricks I have, the more layers I have, I can't get to my heart. So these four bricks, guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy. So guilt is, well, we'll start off with guilt. Guilt is when I've done something wrong and now I have bitterness towards myself. So guilt is, I did something wrong, I owe me something. Man, I owe me because I messed up. Anger is if someone else did something wrong, like if your friend at school, I don't know, called you a mean name, and you say, I'm angry at you, you owe me an apology, I'm angry at you. Greed is when someone looks at the world or their work or their boss or the company they work for and they say, you know, they owe me. In the military setting, which this is a, this is a base where people can resonate with this, someone could say, hey, my, my, my job owes me an award. I, I, I want one of those medals. They owe me. So that's greed. And jealousy is actually when you tell God, God, you owe me. Like, why was I born with black hair? Why was I born at this height? Why couldn't I be born with, I don't know, a rich family, which most people in America are filthy rich? Or if you're in another country, why was I born into poverty? Why was I born in a place where there's no water? Those things are all, each one of those things is a you owe me. 
So again, guilt is I owe me. Anger is you owe me. You, you did me wrong, you owe me. Greed is the world owes me something or my work owes me something or my job owes me something. And jealousy is God owes me something. Here's the truth. Because Jesus set me free, just Jesus set us free and he died on the cross, nobody owes us anything. Nobody owes us anything. In guilt, I don't owe myself anything because Jesus paid that debt. So the antidote to guilt is confession. If I'm feeling guilty, if you're feeling guilty, you might have done something last night. You might have done something yesterday. You might have done something 10 years ago. If you're still feeling guilty about those things, we go to the cross, we go to the gospel of Jesus and say, it's all been paid for. I confess what I did last night. Jesus, thank you for your forgiveness. Confession is the antidote to, to guilt. What's the antidote to anger? What's forgiveness? In this Matthew 18 passage, we talk about, we read about canceling a debt. So if someone owes me something, I say this. You know what, man? Brother, I, you no longer owe me. <laughs> you no longer owe me. I'm going to cancel that debt right now. Are you serious, man? Are you serious? I, I owe you. No, 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 don't worry about it. Cancel that debt. It might be something that happened years ago. Maybe, maybe someone hurt you. Maybe they took your innocence. Maybe there are things that could never be paid back. But we see it through the eyes of Jesus. You don't owe me a thing. You don't owe me anything. Greed. The antidote to greed is generosity. Now, we're, my son, he, he left to go to the back here. This is a true story. My kids are so generous. All my kids are generous. I have four kids. They're so generous. And my son was going to a birthday party, and he goes, Dad, I, I, I don't, we don't have a gift. So he dumps out his piggy bank, and he pulls out 20 bucks. And, and selfish me, you know what the first thing I think of? I was like, oh, dude, don't, don't give, don't take 20 bucks. It's just a kid's birthday party. Don't, don't, in, in my heart, this conversation is happening inside me. And the Holy Spirit, clear as day, says, don't teach him to be greedy like you. The Holy, I'm teaching him to be generous let him be generous back off don't say anything so i backed off and i said gosh the holy spirit's awesome he's teaching my son how to be generous so wherever there's greed and i say the world owes me more i need more stuff i need more i need another drum set or whatever god's the holy spirit is telling me to be generous give until it hurts my old church pastor jeff soniker he taught us irrational generosity like we used to buy dunkin donuts cards and he's, he told the whole church, we spend a lot of money on these cards. Just go to Dunkin' Donuts, wait in line, and then cut in front of someone in line and say, I got this, let me, let me pay for your coffee. And that, for that to, to break through the culture, through, the, through, through uh, the community, and they say, you know, there's something different about those Christians. Something different about them. But if you struggle with, with greed, like I have my whole life, and I didn't even come from greedy parents, I came from the most generous parents. But for somehow, some way, this sin creeped itself into my life, and it became greedy. But I got around people who didn't have much money, and they showed me what it, what it was like to, to give. So the antidote to guilt is confession. The antidote to uh, anger is forgiveness. The antidote to, to greed is generosity. Start giving stuff away. Before you spend your money, cut out a, cut out a portion for God. A lot of churches will teach 10% tithe. We don't believe that. That's give more. Give more. Give with a cheerful heart. Paul talks about 1 Corinthians. Don't, don't get fixed on a number. Just say, you know what? Lord, I'm going to give you. The, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give until I have to sacrifice something. I'm going to give into the community, my time, my resources, everything. It's an act of worship. Lastly, uh, <clears throat> jealousy. I mean, we can complain about our, our height, our, our, our width, our, our color of our hair, all those things. <clears throat> the antidote to jealousy is thanksgiving. When we can look at God and say, thank you for how you made me. Thank you for the tax bracket I was born into. Thank you for the mental capacity I have. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the kids you gave me. Thank you for everything. And with these things, these have to be ongoing ethics in our life. Confession. Uh, forgiveness. Thanksgiving. And, uh, and generosity. Yes, thank you, Pierce. These four things, if they mark our lives, people will see our works and praise the Father in heaven. I promise you, if people see these things are part of our life, 
that we're no longer that we don't walk around as guilty, shameful people, but we're confessing our sins. We don't walk around as angry people because we always forgive. We don't walk around as greedy people because we're always giving away. And we don't walk around like jealous people because we're always giving thanks for all we have. People will see our works and praise the Father in heaven. So let me pray for us as, as I close this devotional time. And let's go and do these things, church. Let's do these things. Father, thank you for, for technology that we can reach out through the internet here. And uh, that this message would help set people free. That they would hear the gospel has set us free to no longer be guilty, angry, greedy, or jealous people. That nobody owes us anything. We never need to pick it. We never need to shout. We never need to do any of these things because you've set us free to be people who, who confess freely. For people who forgive unconditionally. For people who give gen- generously, irrationally they, they give. And for people who give thanks in all things. So Lord, thank you for the spirit that empowers us to do these things. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord willing, we'll see you guys next week, and we'll see you next week on Internet Land. Thanks.